Holy crap. Hey, Nick. Well, today's review is so uh, I got the answer key for that practice test. You got a practice test, right? You did the homework twice? So, just in case, you know. Okay. More practice. Yeah. All right. So, let's see. Where do we want to start? Give me a moment. Yeah, go. Oh, I need the original because I can't remember what I said, how many points they give you. What do you mean? No, 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 you got all these right. Yeah, but just give me a zero. What do you mean? No, you got all these right, so. I know, but on the original I said redo and get up to a something. Oh, okay, then. That's what you got. Sure. Oh, yeah, I went down to the two. So, and that counts as correction, so if you do better on the test, this will go up again. Right, okay, great. So, keep a note of that. Somewhere. Actually, let me hold on to that name. I'm sorry. I, got, I haven't put it in the computer yet because it is. All right. All right. Sure? So, we have a test tomorrow? Yes. All right. Let me also need a practice test. I'm going to put all right. Today is weird already. Okay, so uh, we're what? 64 number 70, 75? Yeah. All right. All right, so what are the steps we go through here to figure out how to factor this thing? GCF first. Good. Always start with GCF, right? Always. But there's only two terms. So you kind of know ahead of time what it wants to try to be. What, what could it be with two terms? Two terms are what kind of things? Squares or cubes? Squares or cubes. Okay. I like it. The biggest question I had for this question was the x cubed with the y. Is that... That's one term. Yes, so let's get over this. Uh, now watch, watch my crunch. For example, a times a b minus a squared. Multiply that. What do you get? A squared. A squared b. Minus a cubed, right? Is that cool? So, so this a squared b is one term, but it's built on multiplication. So I can pull that apart. I can take an A back out, and of course we can take more A's, but I can take an A back out as long as it's still connected by multiplication. It's still connected to both of these. So what do both of these have that are connected to them that I can take out? They each have at least one X, and they each have at least one Y. So it's still connected to both of them. I'm just writing in a better way. This is connected to both of these. It's a better way to write. So then what happens on the next step? X squared plus 6 squared minus 1. Sir, yeah, so there's two X's left because I took one out. That Y is gone. That X is gone. And so what's this? X Right, so, so when you do one step, that's done. You look at what's left and you say, can that go further? So that comes from the ride, and that goes from. I can't read you guys at all. Yeah, okay. Y'all looking up there, but I can't quite tell what your faces are saying. Okay. Some of you guys are good stuff. Some of you guys are like. Yeah. Why is it positive? Here? So, so this by itself, 
how do I factor that? I mean, it's, yeah, x times x is x squared. y times y is y squared. How do I make it negative y squared? One of them has to be positive, one of them's got to be negative. And why is that good? Because then the middle term does what? x, y, and what's this? Minus x, y, and the middle terms cancel, right? That's the whole idea of difference of squares. Since it's a minus, they have to be opposite signs, but thank God, because then they cancel. There's no middle term. That's why difference of squares is so beautiful, so nice. And that's why seven squares don't work for a crap, because if there's a plus there, can they be different signs when the middle term cancels? No. So if it would have been x squared plus y squared, can't do anything. Can't factor them. Because why does this work? That minus allows them to be different signs, so the middle terms cancel. Because do I have a middle term? No, I want them to cancel. If it would have been a plus, can they cancel? No, as far as we know, no. Then what do you do? You stop. It's like if I ask you to factor 17. You're going to go, well, the minute you asked me, I was done. Because I can't break 17 up, right? So if I ask you factor this, if you see this on the test, you can say prime, or you can say already factored. You can circle it and say already factored, Jeff. Because it's prime. It can't go. I can't do it. Okay. Cool. Section 6-3, number 7. Did you have a question? Yeah, it's just another, um, I think. Okay. 6-3, number what now? 7. Oh, all right, so this one, they just gave it to you out of order. You're out of order. No, you are. This whole court's out of order, sir. 70. You guys see that? They just gave it to you out of order? Mm -hmm. Out of order. What sucks is that that's a minus, but I would just bring the negative x squared and then take a negative 1 out so that I can make it positive. We want that x squared Wait. coefficient to be 1. What's the matter? Why? <clears throat> No, I said if it was. Oh, okay. I was like, wait. <laughs> so I can get a positive x squared and put it first, and I can take that positive 5 and put it last, and then negative 6x is in the middle. That looks a lot better. Okay. okay. Is, that, is that cool? You guys see that? They just put them out of order, those dorks. So I just put it back in order. Yeah. Um, but, uh, and of course, I mean, that's not done, right? Yeah. I'm going to let you guys finish it out. And if you are G, I Oh, okay. Uh, what's what's anything to the zero power? So what's x to the zero power? One. What's 1.98 to the zero power? One. Okay. So the thing to realize, though, is if x to the zero power is one, what's three times x to the zero power? One. No. Four. X to the zero power is one. Three yeah. times that oh, is three. one. Three. So this would be three times one, which is three. three. Okay. So you've got to realize in part G, which one of those becomes completely one, and which one of those part of it becomes one. Uh, so we gave it away to the second one. What's anything to the zero power? One. 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 So what's three y to the zero? One. 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 But what's being raised to the zero power over there? Yeah, right. So this is minus four times, what's x to the one. zero? One. And then minus one minus four. Three. Negative three. So those parentheses are so important. They tell you how much this is affecting. This affects both of these. Mm -hmm. It makes it like one times one. They both become one, so the overall answer is for that is one. This zero only goes to the x. What's the four being raised to? An understood first power that we would almost never write. So that's why there's one four still there, but x to the zero is one. Where do I go? Good. Okay. Um, question number 30 and 6.6. .6. Okay. Okay. So this is, uh, this was our first for A into what the hell factoring is good for. And it's not absolutely nothing. Don't say it again. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Fred. Uh, so this was number 30. So what's the idea when I have 
Um, what, what tells me how to solve this? What part of this problem tells me how to solve this? The two. The, the, what, what two? The two Y. No. It's not two Y, though. I mean, that's the part that tells me what to do. If, if this would have been the problem instead, if this, if this was the problem, two plus three Y equals zero, how do you solve that? How do you solve that? Oh, bring two to the... Uh, yes. How do I do that? Yeah. And then divide by three. Yeah. So why is this easy? Because all my y's are there, and they're all together in one term. So I just get that term by itself, and then I get rid of the number. Easy. So why is that not as easy? Can I get all my y terms together? Can I say that that's 5y cubed or something? Can I add these together? Hell no, they're not like terms, right? They're not like terms. So I have a y that has a different power on it. That's what tells me what to do. Not the zero. Thankfully, it is zero. If it wasn't zero and I saw this power, I would have to make it zero. I have to move stuff over. Why do I need it to be zero? What is it I'm going to use? The idea of what? Can anybody tell me? Why is zero so important in this problem? Because one of them equals zero. Yeah, if I have a number times a number, yeah. the only thing I can say that's equal to and know anything is zero. Mm -hmm. If a number times a number is zero, that means one, one of them has zero. to be zero. Oh, that's a definite. If a number times a number is seven, do I know anything about either one of these numbers? No. I don't know shit. Right? It could be seven and one. It could be 14 and one half. Right? It could be 700 and one over 100. It could be an infinite number of things. Oh, shit. So what do, I, what do I do then? I see that is already zero. What do I do with this then? Uh, GCF. Factor it. Factor. Okay. And it's GCF. Mm -hmm. So it's two terms. It can't be, it has to be like squares or cubes, but you're skipping the GCF if you start doing that. What comes out of both? Y. Two Y, y. Plus, two y. plus three equals zero. So then either what? One of, uh, y equals zero. Or either y is zero. zero. Or two, two Y. Or two Y plus, plus three is zero. Equals zero. And they can solve this. Yeah. If that was zero, wouldn't this whole thing be zero? Yeah. Yes. If that if y is zero, this is zero times three. Is that cool? Which is zero. If two y plus three is zero, it's zero times who cares? Is zero. It works. Uh, when I try to check, uh, this is the problem with me. So let's see. If you check zero, that should work nice. Oh, if y is zero, that's two times zero plus three times zero. Zero. Now if you try to check one, yeah. negative three halves, all right, so let's see, check y equal to negative three halves. So it'll be two times. But in this negative three, you didn't have to use both of them to check if it worked, did you? Either, it, well, if y is zero, okay, so y is zero. Okay. Y can't be zero and negative three halves at the same time, it can't. That's like you being there and over there at the same time. That would be neat if I could. So we don't need to uh, to check both of them? You have to. You have I to. already checked one of them. Okay. Is that the problem? Uh, if I check y equals zero. It's okay. This is okay. Then you put zero, zero and zero, zero and zero. That's if y is zero, everywhere I see y, it's zero. Mm -hmm. I can't put a zero there and a negative three halves there. Mm -hmm. Because then you're saying y is two different things at once. And poor little y dude is like, I'm just one dude. Yeah. Because I don't know if that's happening everywhere or something. It can only be one value at a time. You don't put them both in, it's never going to work. So y equals zero works. So here I would put negative three halves squared, right? Two times y squared plus three times y. Yeah. And that's supposed to be zero, right? Okay. And then now, yeah, so what's negative three halves squared? Uh, Negative, uh, no, 9 over 9 four. over 4. Okay. Right. Plus. Minus. Uh, uh, minus 9 over 2. two. Right. 9 over 2. Uh -huh. And is that, that's supposed to be equal to 0? And what's this? What happens here? Yeah. 2. 9 halves minus 9 halves. Oh, okay. Check. So you can check it. You just can't put two different values in at once. Multiple personality variables. No. What I mean is, like, for the homework, did we have to check both values? I don't think it said check. There's one section you've had to use 
really hard. Okay, so if it says check, you got to check well, everything. Oh, oh. But it doesn't make any sense. If this, if your answers are zero or negative three halves, and you go to check it, and you check one of them, well, that's half of your answer. You don't know if your answer is right. What's your answer? These two things. So you're going to check your answer. You got to check both. Sorry. Yes. Just to go back really quick on what you did over there for the powers, you said that um, the four over there is an unstated like one on the top. So yes. for D, uh, 3D, is that a degree of one? 3D. No. So no. Nope. Okay. Uh, I just. I, I kind of remembered that. Let me ask you a neat question. I'm thinking about putting this on the test. Can you give me a polynomial that's degree one? No. Somebody give me a polynomial okay. that's degree one. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. can. Yes. What degree is this? Three. Three. Because you see three y's, right? So give me degree one. One. What? Sure. Why? That's degree one. Because how many oh. how many variables do you see? One. One. So this is degree one. That's one. So what degree is this? One. How many variables do you see? None. So it's degree zero. That's okay. So this does this ever change? It's it just says it's always five. It's like this. So I call it degree zero. It doesn't grow at all. This is degree one because as y, y is one, y is two, y is three, y is four. It's growing in it. And this is degree three because one is one cubed is one, two cubed is eight, three cubed is twenty-seven. Holy shit! It's kind of growing, triple the rate in a way. So degree is kind of like telling me how quickly something grows overall. Right? That's what degree is trying to do. But it's just to add all the variables you see in a term. So we had this whole discussion about what's the degree of this here. Five. How many total variables do you see in that term? I see three A's and two B's. I see five total. Right. Now there are questions in the homework. They say how many variables do you see there? I see two. There's an A and there's a B. But how many of each do I see? I see three A's, two B's. So the degree would be five. It's a fifth degree. How to display it better? I'm sorry. It's my failing as a teacher. Uh, so, what degree is this? Nine. 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 Seven Z's, a, a Y, and that's a nine total. So then, and what's what degree is this? Seven. So this is ninth degree. This is seventh degree. Sixteen. No. What wins? The ninth degree. So it's a like ninth degree. What? What type? What type binomial. of polynomial? Uh, binomial. So it's a ninth degree binomial. Ooh. I always see these We're things competing. The, 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 yes. The degree of a whole thing is the largest degree you see. All right. That's enough of that. Yes. Uh, and the uh, uh, section 6.6, uh, question number 42. Uh, I uh, I did this this method the uh, grouping, but I uh, I stuck in this state. So yeah, you're fine. Okay. And you're then fine. well, let's see what happens. I can't group it. Uh, is it minus twenty one? Yeah. Which one? Forty two. Forty two. It is minus twenty one. Yeah. So that's a problem. Yes. Because all right. Okay. Uh, let's look at. It. So, <coughs> all right. So to solve this, if that wasn't there, how would I solve it? I would. If that was the equation, how would I solve that? Do you see s minus one? No. What's no. happening? No. Add twenty-one. Add twenty-one. Add divide by negative twenty-five. Right. Okay. I get my y alone. But I can't get my y alone when they're not even like terms. That's the whole like I'm trying to 
tell you why do we do this weird shit where we factor sometimes to solve equations. It's when I have no other way to solve it. That's that's we created a way. We created a way to solve it. I can't combine these, so my old way of solving equations doesn't work. So we came up with a new way. That's how we do things. Uh, so I have to factor this, but what method? How do I start it off? Four, four by twenty-one. And why can it, why is it okay to go ahead and start factoring this because the equation? No, Oh, zero. It's equal to zero. If it was equal to two, I better freaking subtract that two over. I'm going to make it equal to zero first because that's the only number that tells me something definitive. Mm -hmm. Number times number equals zero. One of them's got to be zero. Anything else? I'm screwed. It could be anything. Um, with this one, you could uh, just like you could solve that in the three methods. Um, you could do it with um, that that x thing that factors of sure. eighty one. Good. Eight, eight, well, 84? Yeah, 84, and then um, you can do the uh, factoring out 4. 4 won't come out. 4, okay, okay. You can use that one, and then you can use... Um, trial and error, where you just try and until it works, <laughs> which, which is a valid method, actually. Yeah. You have to show me what the hell you're doing. But the way I really want to see is... Mm -hmm. So here's the problem. If, yeah. if you think it's going to be uh, 21 and 4... Mm -hmm. Because they look like they want to make 25, right? Mm -hmm. If they were the same sign. Yeah, this is the same. But to multiply be negative, one of them's got to be negative, negative and the other's got to be positive. So can they ever make 25? No. That makes negative 17. That makes 17. Can't be that. That's the evil law. Have I tried every possible way? No, I haven't tried every possible way. So what's another way I could do that? Oh, Jeff, that's all I can. So let me show you. All right, let me show you a, a different method. So I know twenty-one and four is true, right? Yes. Because that's where the hell it came from. Mm -hmm. So if I if that doesn't work, I can. That's three times seven. Is that cool? Yeah. And that's two times two. <coughs> now I can redo this. Isn't this fourteen times six? Sure. There's another factorization, right? Yeah. You guys see what I'm trying to say? There's another way to try to factor this instead of just going. Uh, what goes into eight four? Yeah. I would never have known 14 goes in 84. Can you guys just see that? 14 goes in 84. Of course you know. I don't want I didn't know that shit. I didn't know that. And I know a lot of math. I didn't know. Until I saw it, 14 times 6. Can 14 and 6 make 25? 14 times 6. No. Really? Yes. 14 and 6? No, 14 no, 20. and 6 yeah, yeah, yeah. makes 25. 20. Yeah. No. No. Some of you guys are still telling me yes. No, 20. And one of them's got to be negative view, but even if they were the same sign, it would be 20. Is that what I need? No. No. What's happening out there? I'm sure you can make 25 out of that job. Man, you guys are optimistic. $14 and $6, that's 25 bucks. <laughs> you guys are fun. Now watch. So here, now what's 7 times 2 times 2? Uh, Go ahead 14, and give me the answer. 14, 20, 20, 20, 28 and 3. Can those make 25? Yes. 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 Negative 25, which one's negative? 28. Yeah, 28. Wow. So, I mean, that's a whole other way to do it. It's just to break it all the way down into its DNA and then recombine the DNA different ways. If you, if, and again, you don't have to do it that way. You don't even have to do it this way. Come up with things that add to be 25, like 30 and 5, if the 30 was negative. And what's negative 30 times 5? Uh, negative 30 one, times 5. One oh, negative Yeah. Do you guys see what I'm saying? So, so where'd this come from? What's 21 and 4? Why is that there? Why is 21 and 4 sitting there? Because they multiply. Because they multiply 84. Yeah. And then what am I checking? I check to see if it makes 25. And because one of them had to be negative, it didn't. You guys with me? Okay. So what am I doing now? I'm making things that make this work, but then I have to check to see if they make that work. Just doing it backwards from what normally is taught. I don't care which one you make work first. You just have to make something that works in both cases, right? It's got to make this happen, and it does, and it's got to make that happen. Oh, shit. Right? Yes? You know, it just came to me right now. I just remember. Um, you could do this on the, the I, I don't know how to explain it, but make the two parentheses, and then you could, um, and then that's how you connect the y's. Uh, yeah, I mean, one way you could do this is just to go, maybe it's 4y and y, and maybe it's 7 and 3, and then you just pray. And if that doesn't work, you move things around. Yeah. That could potentially drive somebody insane. <laughs> and then you stand up in the middle of the test and you start hitting people and stuff. That's, that's not that's good. The way I would, I would. Uh, 
And that way is fine, but if you do it that way, you've got to show me some work. Don't just have a nice, clean piece of paper and the answer suddenly shows up. No, any indication you tried anything, that's crap to me. I, I, you know, the work is everything. The answer is almost inconsequential. I don't care it's to some degree that you get the right answer. I care, do you know what to do? That's what you're learning, not get the right answer. That's crap. Uh, although it's nice when you do. But, so this is too big, right? Yeah. So then I would go down maybe 29 and 4. That makes 25, right? Mm -hmm. But 29 times 4 is? 48? 48? Uh, 84? No. no. Four, six, 36. 36. 106. Uh, 30 times 4 is 116. 116. 116. Still too big, right? Still too big. All right, so then I go to 28 and 3, and we already know that's the right answer, right? I mean, I, this is the another way that I showed you. Instead of just making all this list of factors of this, you can start with a list of things that add to be this. Okay. Because what I just need them to add to be this and multiply to be this in this case, right? So it doesn't Who cares which one you make work first? Okay. You make one of them work, and then you check the other one. Okay. Oh, shit. You make the first one work again, and then you check the other one. Oh, shit. You make the first one work again, and you check. Oh, good. All right. This... Uh... This one better than this. <laughs> yeah, and, and now you now what do you do with that just to kind of do the next step? Uh, yeah, four y square minus twenty eight y plus three y minus twenty one. All right, and then you can and then group. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay, keep going. What's up? For the practice, yeah, I've got several questions for that. What's up? Um. So b five uh, b. Do you have to take the GCF out first? Otherwise, you can't do anything. So, so yes. Uh, but not very, very first. What's the very, very first that you do on 5B? Oh, uh, make it to zero. Good. And what tells you to do that? The fact that one of your X's has a different power, has a higher power. So I've got to get it equal to zero. And how do I get zero over here? Subtract the 16s. I really, really want this to make sense why I do that. We created a method that works. If I have something, two numbers multiply to be zero, I can solve that. So that method means I'm going to factor stuff. And stuff. So when do I use that method when my variables are different powers? Because then I can't put them together. I need a new way to do it. So the new way is factor. And of course, this wants to be, like you might think it's a cube. There's two terms. That's cubed. Is 16 something cubed? No. Nope. Is x something cubed? No. Nothing pretty. So it's not a cubes. But again, what's going to always save your ass is you always do GCF first. And what comes out of both? Okay. And you're left with? Uh, x squared minus uh, 16 equals 0. And then this? 0. Uh, yeah. This? Uh, x, yeah, yeah. Uh, x minus 4, x plus 4. And then you can say either well, this x one or this. Or this or is this. 0 or that is 0 and get your three answers. Why am I not surprised that there are three answers? Oh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. Um, uh, never mind. Cool. I can do that. Now, real quick, real quick. On the heels of what I just said about the three, uh, if I got this problem here, how do you factor this? Yeah, x plus 3. <coughs> so either x plus 3 is 0, or so you get x equals negative, negative 3, or x equals negative 3. So you're like, I got one answer, Jeff. Your whole crappy thing about two. No, I got two answers. They just happen to both be negative 3. I got two answers. They just happen to both be negative 3. Right? I like it. So that rule actually holds always for any polynomial equation like this. The degree of the polynomial tells you how many answers you're going to get. Mm -hmm. You guys, that's kind of cool. Yeah. 
Uh, so we don't know everything yet. And you guys are like, I know that all too well, but can you factor this? X plus two x minus prime. Yeah, you can't factor it. So how many, what would we say here? We can't solve this. There are two answers to this. There are. They're just not real. All right, so that's in your future. And that's unfortunate. Some of you guys know about what's called imaginary numbers or complex numbers. It's unfortunate that we chose the name imaginary. When they first came up with negative numbers, most mathematicians were like, well, that's bullshit. What's negative numbers? What are you talking about? That's crap. That doesn't exist. So for them, the real number line looked like this. Started at zero. Back here was impossible. This was fairyland. This was, you know. So they, they looked at people that came up with negative numbers. They said, what are you on? How did you make it? Do you guys understand? So when they first came up with negative numbers, are you guys cool with the negative numbers? You know, like, unfortunately, yes, because that describes my bank account sometimes. <laughs> and I agree. I understand that totally. All right? But then, so anyway, I'm getting way ahead of myself. The, the, the idea of imaginary numbers, they're called imaginary because when people came up with them, people said, they don't exist. That's crap. The same way they said it about negative numbers. So imaginary is just a dumb name that stuck. And, but then students are like, I knew these were making this shit up. But it's, anyway, that's way in your future. Anyway. Let's come back to our stuff. Um, Yes, they're all just waiting for you to ask a question. G on four, four G. Oh yeah. Uh, so is that a trick question? Nope. There's no such thing as a trick question on tests. Well, it's just bonus that it could be anything I want. I try to make these really obvious. And what I mean by these 